When the Sunrays tool arrived to Luminar 2018, it almost broke the internet. Now, seven years later, in Luminar Neo, this is still a great tool to enhance sun and your light sources. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to master this tool and how to get the most out of it. Well, well, into Luminar Neo we go, where we starting in the catalog module. Here, as always, we are starting by looking at our sample file, which, by the way, if you want to follow me along, just jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample files and do the edit on your own computer. Once you import the image into Luminar Neo, we can continue. So let's have a look at it. It's this beautiful lonely tree I captured here uh, in the south of England. It's a raw file and we will use it for today's episode. So let's take the image, move it into the edit module where we're going to look for the Sunrays tool. But before we're going to do that, let's just brighten the image a little bit. Let's open it up so we can use it. And to do that, well, we're going to go into the main editing toolbar, into Enhance AI and simply take the Accent AI and open it. Now, of course, that we could go into the Develop Pro and do the all heavy lifting there. But today's episode isn't about that. Today we're focusing on Sunrays. So let's just take a shortcut increase the accent and we can continue. <laughs> Once done with that, well, it's time for the Sunrays tool. Where to find it? Really simple. We are already in the main editing toolbar. So let's just move one down into the landscape section where we have the Sky AI and right under it is the Sunrays tool. Just like all the tools in Luminar Neo, to open it, you just click on it and it opens like this. Now you may see it in this form when the tabs are closed. Well, it's really simple. You just click on them, open them and start using the tool. <laughs> but before we start, well, let's ask our friend Lumibot on what is this tool and what we can use it for. Thank you, Jakub. And hello, everyone. Let's brighten things up with the Sunrays tool in Luminar Neo, a creative way to add a realistic light source right into your photo. With just a click, you can place the sun anywhere in your scene, even off canvas, and control everything from the intensity, length, and warmth of the rays to the glow, penetration, and the number of sunbeams. It's perfect for creating dramatic light effects in landscapes, forest scenes, or golden hour edits, and combining it with blending modes gives you even more flexibility. Want help anytime while editing? Just visit cleverphotographer.com slash Lumibot. I'll be right there. Now let's hand it over to Jakub to show you how to control the light. Well done, my friend. Thank you so much for that. Okay, well, now we know what is the tool for and what are some of the controllers. And it's time for us to go through all the different options available in this tool. <laughs> so in the meantime, I have made everything visible and we can jump straight into it. So on the top, we are in the adjustments tab where we have place sun center option. So let's click on that. Once we do that, we get this magical dot on our screen. Now this dot, as you're going to notice in a moment, will represent the position of the sun or the enhancement of the sun. Now you can take it and basically just drag it around. Now, dragging it around doesn't really do anything, right? <laughs> so what you would do, well, in our case, you would position it over the sun here, or maybe you would position it over the source of light you would like to enhance. But really, to be able to see it, let's just go ahead and increase the amount slider. So now, <laughs> by doing that, you can see, in a way, it's trying to place the sun behind the clouds, which is kind of cool. But we know that we're just going to take it and position it behind the tree. Wow, that already looks great. Look at all the different sun rays coming through the leaves and branches. How cool is that? So you already know, place sun center, you position it over the sun or source of light. So let's just zoom in a little bit. I'm using the wheel of my mouse or you can use command or control plus. So look at it. The sun was here. So we position it over the same. Now, zooming out, well, Command or Control zero or your mouse again. And to lose the distraction of the dot, once you're happy with the position, just click on the place sun center again. 
So now we can focus on the scene. Now looking at it, um, let's go back to our amount slider. So amount slider, well, if we increase it, well, we go absolutely crazy, right? I mean, this is way too much, but it gives you an idea on how far you can go. After that, we have the overall look, which by default is on 50. Now I have to say that most of the time I don't touch this. It's set the way it needs to be and it works quite well. However, how it works well, when we bring it down, just makes everything dark. We can still see the effect, but everything becomes darker. And by doing that, the contrast between the sun rays and your original image becomes super powerful. You can see it, right? I mean, we still see the sun rays. Everything else is dark other than some of the highlights in the photo. Now, when we go the other way around, when we overdo it, the contrast become, um, well, I would like to say less visible, but you can still see the sun rays because the amount is full on. However, you can see that it's basically trying to brighten the original image. And then we have the sun rays and it just now a little bit remove the contrast. So if I bring the amount down, you can play around with it a little bit. But as I say, usually 50 is about right if you adjust the amount right. So you know what? Let's go for something more realistic. I'm thinking around 40 on this photo. So 40 on amount, overall look, increase or decrease the contrast in a basic understanding. And we can move on the other two controllers here, very important controllers, where we can adjust the sun rays length, very self-explanatory. So by default on 65, which generally makes them go all the way out of the image. But that's not necessarily always how it looks, right? So we're going to take the slider, bring it down. That will make the sun rays shorter or bring it, well, up. And that will make them super, super long. Well, for us, for this image, I really just want to do something like this, you know, maybe they will poke a little bit over the tree, maybe, maybe not, not too much, because necessarily there is no reason why we would see them. But let's say, okay, let's go for 20. So we're going to do that. Penetration. Well, penetration is very nicely visible here. What it means is that it's basically trying to figure out where to put the sun rays through. So on this image, it's kind of easy because we have a big contrast between the tree the dark element and the background, which is bright. So it can very easily say where should the um, sun rays go through and where not. And you can control that with the penetration, which by default it's on 40. Now penetration, similar to overall look, generally the 40 works well, just like the 50 on the overall look, and you don't need to adjust it. But if you want to play around with it, if your image is maybe a little more specific by bringing it down, you basically remove the penetration. So it will almost disappear unless it's like super, super visible. And when you go the other way around, when you overdo it, it will basically disregard any elements on your photo and just place the sun and the sun rays there. Again, like any of the sliders in the application, if you double click on the slider, it will reset it to its default value, which in this case is 40. And we will go with the 40 now. Very quickly, before we jump into the advanced adjustments here on the top, next to the name of the tool, we have the before and after. So let's just zoom out a little eye icon before and after option. Now you're right. We have a before and after at the bottom of the screen too, but this eye icon is specific for this tool. So basically you're able to see only for what you have done right now, not the entire edit. Now, of course, that we also have the reset tool, which basically resets everything we have done. Well, let's not do that. And we have the eye icon. Well, it's eye icon, almost like an eye icon, right? Well, information icon. When you click on that, it will give you some information about the tool itself. So we know how to use this. Uh, we know the basic adjustments here and we can continue. Now, whenever I use the tool, I go through it step by step. I actually just follow the flow of the tool. So from here, into the sun settings where we're going to adjust the actual sun. So the center of the sun rays. Let's zoom in for that a little bit. Not too much because you want to see it. And after this, we're going to work with sun radius, sun glow radius and sun glow amount. Now they are big words. And honestly, you can try to remember what they do. But the easiest way to do this is to simply take the slider and I adjust these all the time. So take the slider and bring it all the way up so you can see what it does and then bring it down. And once you bring it down, just slowly increase it. You can see it kind of creates this glow around the sun. If it's still too close, you can zoom out a little bit and just adjust it until you get the look you like. Now, you can push it around 42 and have this kind of bigger glow 
outside, like in this area, or you can bring it down and basically just get a glow around the center of the sun. So something like this. With the sun glow radius, you do exactly the same. Well, you take the slider, bring it down, bring it up and see what it does. And then just move it around and find a soft spot. <laughs> so for me, I think 60 is right. Now, third slider here, sun glow amount. Again, down we go, up we go, what we prefer. This one is very subtle. It just creates very soft glow around the center. So let's go for 45. Wow, where are we? <laughs> 10, 12 on sun radius, 60 on sun glow radius, and 45 on sun glow amount. Not bad, right? Let's check it before and after. Not bad at all. So that's sun settings. Next up, it offers us adjustments to number of sun rays and randomize, and it's called race settings. So number of sun rays, well, very simple. You can see that there is a lot already, well, 50. And by increasing the slider, we will add sun rays. And by bringing it down, we will remove them. So we'll just get you. Anyway, I quite like on this, the 50, so we'll do that. Now, randomize, what it's going to do, it will basically rotate the sun rays around and give you the look you're looking for. So as you shift it around up to 100, you will basically just get a different, how you would say, different direction of the sun rays, different positions, until you find what you're looking for. So let's say that we gonna go for something like this 43 it kind of shines on this area and also on this area so uh, there are highlights there already so let's follow that so that is race settings now we close that and finally we go into the warmth this is a really important section because with the use of warmth we can color match the new sun rays with the original photo if we have a look before you can see that the sun inside is warm not completely yellow but warm and our new sun rays and sun are more like cool more white so to adjust this really simple take the sun warmth which will work with the center of the effect and increase it well all the way maybe not all the way because that is too warm but i'm thinking around 80 and then when the sun rays warmth same thing, but just for the sun rays. So I am thinking around oof, 70. Is it too much? Well, again, zoom out. No, I think that's about right. 70, 80, 80 is too warm. So um, <laughs> let's go for average 75. Yeah, yeah we're going to go for 75. Now, this looks good, but honestly, I'm not so happy about the direction of the sun rays here. I think it's a little bit too visible. So we can close the warmth open the ray settings and let's bring it down because I like the original position the most and let's stick with that. That's cool. I really like that. So now we are done pretty much. Of course that you can click on place sun center again and move it around. So you can actually see how it works with uh, the mask of the element and how it hides it behind. You can of course position it a little bit just to adjust the direction of the sun rays until you really really happy with it but i'm happy with it i think it looks cool now additionally of course that you can use masking with this tool with this specific image it will not work very well because because uh, the sun rays tool is not only adding the sun rays but it is basically as you seen earlier enhancing or adjusting the whole photo so if i for example use the masking and let's go into the brush and say I want to erase part of this effect. So let's say that I don't want the sun rays above the tree. So let's do that. Let's make our brush bigger. Yeah, again, you are on erase, softness 100, strength on 102. Now when I brush here, if I do this, you would think I will just remove the sun rays, but actually I'm removing the whole overall look and it doesn't look great. So very rarely this works when, for example, there is element which is really close to the camera and it doesn't need the effect at all. But in overall, the masking isn't greatest for this specific tool because, as I say, it's not only that it adds the sun rays, it kind of adjusts the whole photo. Now, that's it for masking. So once you finish with this, well, you just continue editing. When it comes to the sun rays tool, I consider it as a heavy lifting tool, just like Sky AI, maybe overlays and so on. This is quite heavy adjustment or heavy 
edit to the photo. And I generally do this right after the raw development. And because they are quite heavy adjustments, you need to often apply another tool on the top of it to blend everything together. Now, for example, in this case, what we could do to blend things together is to use mystical tool. Now we already talked about mystical tool a few weeks ago. It's a great tool, which adds nice glow and warm. And what you can do in this case is just to take the amount and increase it. And as you can see that just matches everything together, because right now it's not working only with the original photo, but it's working with the original photo and the sun rays tool. Of course, that you could use other tools like a mood tool, apply LUT. You could again open the enhance AI and apply even more enhancement here and continue with the edit. Well, there you have it. This is the Sunrays tool, a great way of enhancing your sun or adding new light source to your images. But this is not it. We actually have a video tutorial for every single tool in Luminar Neo. So don't stop now. Head to our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer and continue learning today and keep moving forward on your photo editing journey.